Hello, adventurer, and welcome to Chapter 42 of Spelljammer's Guide to the Plains, Surviving Athos. If you had followed all previous chapters, including Chapter 40, How to Avoid Getting Stuck on Athos, and Chapter 41, Please, for the love of the gods, don't go to Athos, this section will not be necessary except for academic use. If this is not for academic use, we will light a candle in the memory of you and your crew at your preferred place of worship. Today's sponsor is Warlock Sanctum Games, professional GMs for hire. Please check out their games, Houses of the Blooded, and Lancer, as well as many more in the link below. Subchapter 0 Why is Athis dangerous for planar travel? Athis is very dangerous. All of Athis is a planet where there is only war and death. In the case of planar travel, Athis's outer plane, called the Grey, is especially dangerous to spelljammers, as it's a vast featureless void and prevents reliable planar travel to and from Athis. Take for instance the folly of the Githyanki, normally one of the most feared planar threats. When a few Githyanki ships manage to pierce the Grey and land on Athis, their spelljammers failed them, and over the centuries they reverted to roving bands of barbaric raiders. Subchapter 00 How to Leave Athis If your spelljammer is still in working order, leave immediately! Don't look back, don't wait for anyone who left to get help, very few have seen Athis and returned to any port to tell the tale. Take any opportunity you can to leave. If your spelljammer is unavailable, there is one dangerous way to leave, planar travel spells. Any attempt to travel to a plane outside of Athis takes the spellcaster to the Grey. If you can successfully navigate the Grey on foot, you may be able to leave Athis. Note that most mortal beings and errant souls begin to lose all sense of self in the Grey until they are reduced to invisible beings with no memory in the empty clothes of their previous life. Some say that Athasian moons, Raoul and Guthe are better places for spell jammers to settle down, but this is based heavily on rumor. If none of these options are available to you or aren't desirable, many a doomed spell jamming crew have done well devolving into wasteland raiders and or just going native. Step number one to surviving Athis, assess your surroundings. The easiest way to determine if you are indeed on Athis is to have a cleric or paladin try to use any of their divine powers. If they work, congratulations, you are not on Athis. If they do not, again we will light a candle in your crew and your memory. The second easiest but most dangerous way to confirm that you are on Athis is to have an arcane spellcaster cast a spell. If they've blighted the surrounding wildlife, you are on Athis and should immediately leave the area for fear of the locals burning you at the stake for being an evil defiler. After confirming you are on Athis, you need to identify where you are on Athis. Whether it's the obsidian fields of the Deadlands or the Crimson Savannah, in most cases you'll find yourself in a featureless desert. Don't assume you aren't on Athis if you land in a forest or jungle. Athis has a few forests which help maintain a balance in its doomed ecosystem, such as the Crescent Forest in the mountains. If you find yourself in a city, you best see if there is a golden tower and colorful ziggurat in the distance. If so, you are in the free city of Tyr, and slavery is illegal within its walls. It's the closest city that can even compare remotely to civilization. If not, please wait before interacting with the locals, as they may sell you out to the local sorcerer monarch or warlord for water. Step 2 to surviving Athis. Assess yourself. Equipment. Metal is rare on Athis. Keep all precious metals hidden in a safe place as it is mainly used by noblemen. Gold coinage is replaced with ceramic coins. Weapons and armor are not made of iron or steel, instead they are made from bone, stone, and wood, and other salvaged items. Most light armor comprises of leather and animal hide. Many a planar traveler's tale has ended on Athos for inadvertently flaunting material wealth. Since magic is highly de detrimental to the environment, magic items too should be concealed, unless they are psionic in nature. Race. 
Many Athesian races are regarded quite differently than in other places like Eberron and Faerun. If you are a human in a human city, huzzah, you will not immediately be looked down upon. If you are an elf, you will be considered untrustworthy and likely to be a bandit or a con artist. If you are a dwarf, assess if you have hair, a beard, or any other body hair. If you do, you can easily get a job as a hairy dwarf in a traveling freak show on Athos, as all dwarves are completely hairless here. If you wish to blend in, it is recommended to remove all hair. This may be against your culture and heritage, but on Athos you don't have that anymore. If you are a halfling, you will be considered uncivilized and possibly a cannibal. Do not eat at halfling feasts. If you are a half-elf, be ready for a lot of hate and xenophobia, as Athasians are not usually open to human and elf relations. The following races were killed off in a genocidal war, and as such it is recommended that you say you are just a desert mutant instead to avoid complications. Kobolds, Ogres, Trolls, Orcs, Gnomes, Wemmick, Pixies, Goblins, and Tari. While most commoners won't be able to recognize these races, we do ask that you be careful around sorcerer kings and queens because they were the ones who killed these races off in the first place and may not like the idea that they missed a couple. Two common Athasian races that should be mentioned are the four-armed Thrycreen Mantis people. Commonly found on Athos, the Thrycreen are often strong with psionics and experts at navigating the wastes. And moles, half-dwarves with the height of a human and muscles of a dwarf. They were force-bred as slave gladiators and are extremely adept at surviving Athos's harsh conditions. Class. Sorcerers, warlocks, and wizards, your magic may still work, but be aware that arcane spells are considered dangerous and highly illegal. The only wizards who can openly practice are the sorcerer kings and queens, and their templars who learned magic through study or natural aptitude. Unrestricted magic can easily blight the land and lead Athos further into its climate disaster. If you wish to study non-harmful magics, you can try to learn about preserving magic from the Veiled Alliance, a secret group of freedom fighters against the tyranny of sorcerer kings and defilers. Note, though, that commoners don't usually differentiate between preservers and defilers. Clerics and paladins, you are cut off from your divine magic and deity. Your best bet is to do something more useful and learn how to swing a sword instead of rely on your deity as a training wheel. Psionic Subclasses Welcome to the best place to learn psionics. Most commoners are born with a little bit of psionics, but the main draw are the psionic colleges that teach how to master the way of psionics. Since psionics are so common, most commoners understand the difference between using a psionic power versus using a verbal component for a spell. Fighters, rogues, rangers, druids, and barbarians should have no trouble blending in, although bards may wish to avoid using spells and focus on something more useful like political assassination, as Athasian minstrels are notorious for being assassins proficient in the use of poisons. Step 3 to surviving Athos. Quick Tips Following the following quick tips may help you survive a few months on Athos. The world is mostly desert. The desert is deadly, but cities are treacherous. Water is precious, guard it well. Metal is one of the rarest materials on Athos. Arcane magic is illegal and defiles the environment, but psionic and druidic magic is fine. Tyrannical sorcerer monarchs rule the city-states, except Tyr. Do not confuse the city-state of Tyr with the lawful good deity of Tyr. Beware the dragon of Tyr. He is the only known dragon on Athos because he's killed all the others. The gods are absent, and you will have no divine guidance. The environment is just as deadly as the monsters. Many a traveler has found out that an innocent cactus actually killed their entire party. Familiar races aren't the same as on other worlds. 
In conclusion, we hope that you've enjoyed this educational lesson. If you are on Athos, we wish you a speedy death and are sorry that your immortal soul will never reach its destined afterlife. A candle will be lit at the memorial on the Rock of Brawl for you and your crew. Please tip us at our Kofi account in the description below if these tips helped you. Additionally, if you'd like to check out more personal D&D stories, please click the sigil next to my head. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.